So without further ado, uh, this company is going to be, this should be a fascinating talk. Len Parham is the founder and CEO of Pundit Analytics. Uh, I'm going to let him sort of describe what they do, but you can kind of imagine from the name, we're right in the heat of primary season coming up on what's going to be a pretty freaking hardcore election. And so nobody is probably more plugged into the mayhem than uh, Glenn. So. <laughs> this entire meetup. Thank you to Skydeck Sybil specifically. Um, we're a Skydeck hot dust company and they've been so amazing to us over the past year that we've been with them. Uh, really has kind of transformed our growth to become something that we would have not imagined one year ago today. So thank you to Skydeck and Sybil. Um, so my name is Glenn Parham and I'm the CEO and founder of Pundit Analytics. Um, and I'm kind of kind of go into how we leverage cloud with political data. I know it's a very kind of weird niche. People don't really uh, put together political data in cloud computing. They're like, what's kind of the relation there? So I'm really excited to see other nerds like me that are really interested in this kind of stuff here today. Um, if you guys have any questions, just raise your hand or just shout it out throughout the presentation. Um, so I'll give you kind of a little bit of a context about what we do, how this came to be on the analytics. Um, so here's where we've been. Uh, so I was a UC Berkeley student in undergrad studying computer science, but really also passionate in, uh, into politics. So back in 2017, I wanted to start a uh, political kind of organization that focused on political tech, but there wasn't really one that was on campus at the time. So me and my CS61B project partner, actually, we started a, pro uh, a club together called PCS at Berkeley, Political Computer Science at Berkeley. Um, and it's still around today. It's still doing very, very well. They're doing a lot of amazing projects like using linear algebra to analyze um, like polarization and Russian interference and all sorts of crazy stuff. So check them out, pcs.berkeley.edu. Uh, but after that, after doing that for about a year, I decided I wanted to go more all into the entire political tech scene, um, largely because it wasn't really a thing. And I wanted to kind of get my feet wet. And I realized I probably couldn't you know, pass my CS courses while doing that. So I took some time off from Berkeley and said, okay, let me just investigate this for a little bit. Um, and then we have, me and my co-founders, we had a few different iterations of Pundit. So Pundit was a Amazon Alexa skill. So you know Alexa, that's always listening to all of your conversations. Um, you could ask Alexa, hey, how did my congressman vote on, you know, that recent healthcare bill? And she would say, oh, you know, congressman so-and-so voted against healthcare or something like that. Um, and then. After that, it was like a political Wikipedia page where you could find out information about politics, how your congressman voted um, on a website. And then we iterated that to a political social network. And Sybil was with us through all this, so she's like, oh my god. But um, it w then it was a political social network, so you could discuss politics on a platform because we realized that Facebook and Twitter probably aren't the best way to discuss politics because it's kind of like, you know, a very convoluted process. Um, and getting into this from kind of a startup perspective, uh, as I mentioned, we are a Skydeck company and becoming a tech startup is extremely, extremely difficult as I'm sure there are a lot of founders here today. It's a very arduous kind of long process, uh, but specifically in political tech, it's like very, very difficult because of a lot of uh, abnormal constraints that you won't find typically. So with political tech, the market is like, so freaking crazy because someone uh, put it to me the, this way the other day and they said politics is a multi-billion dollar industry that intentionally goes bankrupt every 12 months <laughs> like there's no other industry in the private sector that intentionally wants to spend every last dollar they have and go bankrupt by like November 6th that doesn't happen um, so having that like every 12 months there's a completely new apparatus of company uh, entities the committees advocacy groups, all these different kind of things. So having stability in that environment and trying to create a product and you know have that scale is very, very difficult in this kind of market. Um, awareness, so back in 2017 when I got into political tech and was really interested, Silicon Valley really did not care about politics. I think they still, they're starting to come around to it today, I think, because now they see that uh, tech has largely messed up politics to a great extent. Um, but Silicon Valley was kind of like, does not really uh, addressing the concerns within political tech. And then lastly, ethics. So tech and politics is extremely, extremely 
consequential to our democracy. Um, you can have a very, very large impact using tech on democracy. Um, so that just kind of holds our, our standards to a much uh, higher degree. So when we're making decisions as a startup, we can't just make decisions like left and right and, and uh, fail fast, because if we fail, that could have like really bad implications on um, the way we live our lives. So that's been something that we've had to consistently monitor. So today, here's what we are. We are Pundit Analytics, and we automate political competitive intelligence. So it's basically like Crunchbase, but for politics, and way more insightful. Um, from the ground up, we are politically oriented. And no, I'm not a Russian operative. I get that question all the time. Like, are you, you know, affiliated? No, we are. Um, we're, we're not here to dis disrupt the democracy or any like anything like that. We just want to make a lot of things a lot more transparent when it comes to campaigning. Uh, this is our website. This is our landing page. All right, so you're like, okay, cool. This is all awesome. But what does this have to do with cloud? This all sounds kind of like uh, frivolous stuff. Um, something that I found out going into this the past couple months particularly is I realized just how time sensitive politics is. It's like insane. Because unlike anything in the private sector, the deadlines, which are the elections, are 100% immovable. Like in order to move the deadline or extend it, you'd have to overturn a federal law, right? So the amount of time, the, the time is a really, really, really scarce resource. And that's unlike any other sector that's out there. Um, and things change by the minute. Literally, there's a democratic debate right right now, I believe. Um, and like over the course of the next two hours, you'll probably see 50 different things trending on Twitter. It literally changes by the second. Um, so having that real-time component is like unbelievably important. And then there's a lot of data in politics, a lot of data, you know, thousands of new data points every single second. Um, but what is kind of difficult when it comes to the political sector is Political, uh, the political establishment, shall we say, is not really tech oriented. They're not software engineers, they're not techies, they're largely in DC. Um, so we can't just throw them a bunch of data and be like, all right guys, here you go. They need to be able to interpret these insights and really understand what's going on um, and have, it, have those analytics be interpretable. So here's exactly why we need cloud, why it's so important. It's maybe we'll go over a lot of people's head. Um, we need it for real time data ingestion and graphical analysis. Sounds pretty cool, right? Um, but let me kind of go into what that exactly means. So let's say our clients want to answer the question, how much money is Trump spending on his re-election campaign? So before, the way it would work when you wanted to look at Intel is you would look at campaign expenditures from Trump's campaign over the last quarter. So FEC, the Federal Election Commission, um, they publish every single quarter how much each federal uh, campaign is spending. So that's like how much they're spending on ads, how much they're raising, all that kind of stuff. But the problem is that this Intel is pretty much useless because Intel from like six months ago does not play into what's going on literally today, the past like 24 hours. Um, so a lot of the data, you know, it's great to run analytics and the draft reports and that kind of thing, but it really doesn't serve any major benefit to people who want to uh, make split decisions split second decisions on the Intel um, in real time. So what Pundit Analytics does is we can get this real time data and model it very uh, complex and like with a lot of complexity. So we can get Facebook ads, for example, and Facebook ad expenditures from the Trump campaign um, every second. So when Trump launch, launches an ad, like seven seconds later, we know about it. And not only do we know that he's, he's launched a campaign, but we know um, that he's targeted like 18-year-old uh, females in Wisconsin, and like this zip code. It can get really, really granular, and we know exactly how much the campaign's spending. But something, so I mentioned the real-time aspect of cloud, that's really important to us. But something that's even more important is the graphical analysis part. Um, so traditionally with like a regular data, uh, like a relational database, a SQL database, um, you might do like a, a query like, where campaign equals Trump, sum up all of those contributions or something like that, right? But it turns out that like the Trump campaign is like probably only 10% of the actual entire effort to get Trump reelected. So what that means is there's like a lot of uh, political action committees or organizations, advocacy groups that might spend a million dollars in the past 24 hours on getting Trump reelected. But it's kind of hard to detect that because everything in politics is so decentralized and really kind of all over the place. 
So with graphical analysis, we can perform real-time analytics and detect that, okay, Trump, Trump's campaign is spending, you know, spent $100,000 yesterday on Facebook ads, but also all of the organizations that the campaign is related to spent X amount of dollars on ads. And that's really, really important. Um, here's what we've learned getting into this. Uh, the gravity of our work is something that um, we, we continue to realize the importance of what we do and just uh, making sure that all of our, our tech stack is really secure and the cloud has been really, really critical in that because it's all really centralized and makes it um, able to kind of partition authentication, that kind of stuff. Um, and it's also, you know, the cloud is a double-edged sword. Of course, it provides a lot of innovation, not denying that, but it also makes it really easy to scale like very malicious behavior um, in just democracy in general. So you could use cloud to spin up deep fakes and misinformation. Literally, you could do that from like a uh, like blue bottle coffee shop or something. It's so easy to do. Um, so that has been probably the scariest thing getting into this. We're not malicious players ourselves, but we recognize that um, it only takes one person to leverage cloud to do like a like completely scalable attack against our democracy. So that's great. And then um, <laughs> that's pretty much all the all that I have. Uh, from my standpoint, I'll answer like our most frequently asked questions because I get this literally every single day in my DMs. Um, so what campaign campaigns or political groups does Planet Analytics work with? I cannot comment on that. Sorry, I'm just going to say that off the bat. Um, how are you different from Cambridge Analytica? I get this. I literally just got this question today. We don't focus on the electorate. So Cambridge Analytica, they use you know big data and all those buzzwords to. Uh, manipulate the electorate and spin up misinformation and target people and exploit them. We don't do that at all. We don't even analyze the electorate whatsoever. That's not our domain. And then I also get the question, who is going to win in November 2020? <laughs> if I knew, I would be very rich. Um, <laughs> but uh, of course, we have a lot of intel on these campaigns, and we'll see how that plays out with the electorate. Um, but because we're not analyzing the electorate, I can't tell you how the 13th district in Wisconsin is gonna swing in November. I have no idea. Um, that's on our domain, but, but yeah, those are pretty much all the frequently asked questions that I get. Any other questions, um, you can either ask them now or, yeah, what's up? So with uh, this landscape you're describing where the whole thing burns to the ground every year or two, Yeah. Um, what are the dynamics from a customer perspective? Obviously your total addressable market is pretty small, right? Right, so it's really complicated because the you know campaigns or whatever dissolve every 12 to 24 months. It's hard to find that consistency. Um, right now, the political sector is growing like at an unprecedented rate. It's growing about 33% per cycle. So back in like 2012, they spent like six billion dollars, um, and then I think we're about to hit 13 this year um, in just the presidential campaigns. By the way, so the total addressable market, you know, compared to a lot of different industries, it's not as large. Um, but because we're literally the only like tech players in it, it makes it a lot easier to kind of um, dominate the market, which we've been fortunate enough to do so far. Yeah, what's up? Two questions. Yes. Um, and, and so the preface with questions are, it sounds like what you're doing is actually analyzing the behavior of campaigns. Exactly. Yeah. So that leads to two questions, which is one, uh, how large, roughly, are the data sets that you look at? And the second question is, what level of reporting from the campaign would make your job, would make your job easier and make the more Well, sorry, what was the second one? So, uh, what, what level of report, what information should the campaigns be reporting from the FEC or your whoever that uh -huh. they currently are not? Okay, great question. Um, so the first question is, uh, how, how, basically how much data are we, we talking, right? How big is the big data? Um, and it's huge because, let's just talk about Facebook ads. Unbelievable. Um, so when you see a Facebook ad, you think, okay, there's just one ad that a campaign launched um, and that's kind of, they, maybe they spent $10 million on this single ad. Um, but a single ad, there's like, from what we've seen, there could be like up to 15,000 different versions of that single ad and think there's like 400 different ads that are being run um, by a single campaign. And that's just one campaign, that's not counting the different organizations and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so just right now we're only tracking like 50 campaigns, it's all automated, um, but we're getting like at least 500 data points a second um, from these different camp, and that's kind of a lower bound. Uh, but it definitely goes up 
especially if we ingest a lot of tweet, uh, Twitter data. And like, for example, our uh, services are, I'm probably gonna get charged a lot of money uh, for the, the democratic debate that's going on right now. Um, because typically, I think for the last debate, there were about 175 tweets per second um, throughout, uh, sustained throughout the two hours. So you can imagine how much that adds up. Um, and then the second question, what kind of data should these campaigns really be reporting? Um, first of all, I'd love to see these public disclosures of data to uh, be a lot more modernized um, because right now it's decentralized. There's no like, there's not really a tagging system. They just kind of input random expenditures and they can just kind of BS all of them. Um, and it's not real time because you just have to report it once every quarter. Um, so as I mentioned before, quarterly data, it's so stale, it's so old. So it really doesn't provide any real time insight. Um, so that's where Pundit Analytics comes through to kind of uh, be the, the real time expert and all that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know you can't diverge like the customers you work with, but I understand you like bypassing you work with the opposing sites as well. Yes. Like, uh, when your website it says like data doesn't lie, I, I know the website, but it says this data doesn't lie. Oh, okay. Then data yeah. can be made to lie. So you can present a part of the story which is a, in this particular nested group, you know. And uh -huh. uh, so do you guys just provide the analytics to them, or do you provide strategy as well to your know, customer? Is a political organization or an NGO or a think tank, you know? Yeah. And how do we get better Yeah, so when we say data doesn't lie, uh, the data that we get is straight. It's not actually from the campaigns. I'm not like, hey, uh, Trump, can you hand over you know, your expenditures for the past day? We're getting it through kind of um, different methods that are a lot more secure and a lot more uh, verified than the accuracy of the data. Um, like there's no reason that the data would be fudged. So that's what we mean when we say the data doesn't lie. We're not listening to like, um, you know, any misinformation or just t tweets in general. We're listening to the data that's coming from the campaigns, but not, it's kind of a long thing, but um, uh, that's been a really critical component is really providing those analytics to our clients um, because they are not tech oriented. They can't analyze the data themselves. So we don't provide the strategy. I'm not, you know, saying, hey, you know, do X, Y, and Z. Um, but the way we've automated our analytics is in a way that they can kind of see for themselves and, and use our service to services to see the trends. And that's kind of we're more of a tool rather than like a consultant. So, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? We all good? Cool. Any questions? Just come up to me afterwards and just hit me up. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.